the good thing about the fact that I burned through like I told you I need to be careful about doing is that you were able to see that. If you'd like to follow the process of turning a block of wood like this into a guitar like this, then you've come to the right place. And if you would like to see me give this guitar away, click subscribe, hit the bell. Guitar that was abandoned for two years. Okay, do I do an inlay? One of these is what we're gonna try and do. Is it gonna look like something that was done with a laser cutter? Probably not. Will it look good? Sure hope it's so. I'm gonna announce it to the winner on Tuesday or Wednesday, and I'm gonna cut it off, and then on Friday, you'll be able to see who actually got the high bid on it. Hey guys, it is good to have you here back at Let's Build a Guitar. Thanks for watching. Again, thank you guys who are devoted to coming and checking it out. I know there are some weeks that I've got lots of great stuff and other weeks I'm just kind of going through motions of building guitar stuff and and yet you come back and watch. So thank you, I appreciate that. I especially appreciate so many of you who give so many encouraging uh, comments to me. I really do appreciate that. Hey, so I am now completely sprayed with this black guitar, uh, the black Batman era cloud style guitar that Prince played uh, during that time um, of that Batman movie way back with Michael Keaton. And anyway, I have got this one to the place now where I have sprayed it with a clear coat and it has been four days since I've done that. So the clear coat is good and solid and I am going to now uh, begin to sand it down and hopefully be able to polish it up and get rid of any of the orange peel that's on that body now. So it's looking really, it's looking really good. This is the guitar that's being auctioned off to help me take wheelchairs over to Vietnam, which is an exciting thing. And that makes this just a very special guitar. This one's special to me for a lot of reasons. You'll have to watch past videos if you haven't to know why this one is so special to me. Hey, speaking of guitars that have gone out to people, uh, Marcus Morgan has sent me a couple of little videos, so check these out while I get started on this. Well guys, I believe I am ready to ship this off. I think it's done. I am just going to have to get the address for Marcus and send it to him. And Marcus, would you please play it for a little bit for us? We'd like to hear it because I'm sure you're better than I am. Hey, hey Steve, what's going on? What's going on? I finally got it plugged up. <laughs> It's about time. I want to say thank you so much. Ever since I got this guitar up in and all. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. The way these pickups just scream at you. Oh my God, yes. And this neck. This is Prince Spect. Yes, I adore it. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And I'm really loving this right here. This has been the center piece. I love it. Like... Trust me, I call this one diamond, so I'll be getting, getting in contact about Pearl. <laughs> but that's going to be a more original built version. Thank you so much. Now, to test it out. <laughs>
I follow a lot of different guitar Facebook pages that guys build guitars and you know some of the DIY guitar and different luthier Facebook pages. One of them is amateur guitar building and then uh, of course there's elite guitar building, there's all these different ones. But one of the things that I've noticed, especially with guys who are just getting started, so I just wanna, right now, give me permission to talk to the guys who are just kinda getting started with this. They wanna do something like this and they just don't know how to achieve the kind of results that we want to see. Like, to have a finish that looks like a finish that would be on a showroom floor, right? When I was younger, in my day and age, we didn't play so many video games. One of the things that we did for pastime, especially in the winter, because in the winter time it's too cold to go do anything in Minnesota, uh, we'd build models, you know, like little model cars. In fact, I still have some. Dang it, I've got one right over here. It is dusty and dirty and it's kind of broken up a little bit. Oh, this was a 69 Mercury Cougar and I actually had a green 69 Mercury Cougar like this at one time. Uh, but kind of look at the paint job. So <laughs> I kind of had this thought back then that the way you painted was, you know, well, okay, if you were really good, you might have to put a little primer on first, and then you'd spray the paint on. And I'd oftentimes try and get all the paint I needed in one shot, like in here, you can kind of see it like that. Uh, yeah, things really falling apart. But I would paint it and then think, that's it. I'm done. Um, you know, and then when I started working on guitars, I kind of treated it the same way where I would paint the guitar. This this is like when I'm 17 years old. I had this guitar that I wanted to paint red. It was it was an old junky guitar that I got from somebody. I thought, I'm gonna fix it up. And so I painted it. I used like Krylon spray paint, spray painted it, and that was it. That was done. Uh, no clear coat, no sanding it down no uh, polishing it up. If you do that, you're gonna end up with rough paint. Now I wanna show you something on the front here. This isn't quite done yet where it needs to be, but take a look at this. If you look at this where I've sanded, now I've sanded with 800 grit, there are some very, very small, light, little speckly, shiny spots there yet. Those are gonna come off. And I'm gonna stop using the 800 grit here because I don't wanna burn through my clear coat too quickly. So I've got this to 800 where it's just very slightly sparkly here and there. Now, let's say for a moment that I stopped there and I just polished it up, but then you would see what we call orange peel. There would be all these little bumps and little valleys. I mean, barely there, but you'd see them. And it wouldn't be this glossy, mirror-like finish that we're going for. So right now I'm still working on this back. When I'm doing this, and I cover this most of the time, so guys, if you're new, uh, you know, this is 800 grit is where I'm starting on this. And then I'm gonna go to 1000 grit, 1500 grit, 2000 grit, 2500 grit. I'm gonna go all the way up to 12,000 grit is what I do now to polish it. But at 800 grit, I don't do these corner edges and stuff. At 800 grit, I'll, I'll do the, the flat part like in here, but I'm not gonna do these edges at all because I will burn through my paint very, very quickly. And when I get to 2000 grit, that's when I'll work on these edges a little bit and barely, and then I'll go to 2500 grit on them and 3000 and then I'm not so worried. At 3000 grit, I'm not worried about burning through at all. Clear coat is the hardener that goes over top of the paint. Paint will just scrape off if you don't have a good clear coat on it. As I'm working on this and trying to get it sanded down and it's thinking about the comments that I just made about refinishing or finishing this so that it's nice and glossy. Um, and I said that you don't just spray it and then you're done. If you're doing a satin finish, then once you've got to the place where you've got it sanded and everything's leveled out the way you want it to be, then you do spray satin and you can be done if it's a satin finish. So just to clarify that, you know, I don't always think through all the other little details that somebody else might be thinking. So yes, yeah, satin finish, uh, you might spray and just be done with it. I am just so absolutely thrilled that Marcus likes the guitar so much. It's fun to hear him say that uh, he takes it everywhere he goes and that he's having a hard time putting it down. That's just real encouragement.
I have yet to plug this up, but I really thank you for this guitar. I love it. I love it. I love it. I have not been able to keep my hands off of it. I've been taking it with me everywhere, actually. <laughs> like, I am so in love with this guitar, Steve. Thank you so much. Um, man, yeah, I just hope that it's something that will just help spur him on to keep going for, for a long time. And, yeah, you know, be encouraged, Marcus. You're... You're a great young musician, so keep at it, buddy. Okay, so now that you're all caught up, I think it's time for me to go to bed. So the wonderful thing is the magic of camera. It's interesting, guys, on the weeks where I'm just primarily sanding and sanding and sanding, it's a little bit hard to come up with content for you guys that I, I hope you're interested in. Uh, but maybe you're just one of those people who likes to watch people doing mundane things. And if that's you, this is your channel right now. Boy, that's not something I want to advertise, is it? But right now what I'm doing is I am on 2000 grit sandpaper on this black guitar that has been clear coated and it's got a nice thick layer of clear coat on it. And I am just working my way up to get it polished. By the way, I just want to show you, um, the place where I had put that glue boost in to fill in that little dip, I really can't even show you because I don't know where it is exactly. It was somewhere right up in this area here, but I, I can't even see where it was. So that worked pretty dang good to, to fill that in. So now this is not sponsored by any means. I don't have any sponsorships whatsoever. So, hey, but if you want to sponsor me, you can go to Patreon and help support. That would always help. I don't make a lot there, but it does help a little bit to offset the guitars that I give away and the parts that I need for them. So I always do really appreciate you guys watching. And those of you who send notes or uh, comment below uh, are always real encouraging, except for a couple of those trolls once in a while. You know, you get those on every YouTube channel and page. Somebody just feels like they got to be the one to stand out and be annoying and obnoxious and mean and all that stuff, which... If that's you, grow up, get over it, change your ways. Being an encourager in this life instead of tearing people down. Uh, I haven't had anybody like that for a while, but when it does happen, it's like, what? what is the point? Be nice people. Fight for joy. That's what I say. So I'm just going to keep working on this till I get it polished up. It's starting to come along, but... Uh, I got a ways to go. We need this to be nice and shiny black. So right now I'm on 2000 grit sandpaper. I'll show you again when I get up to somewhere around 12,000 grit and we'll take a look at it then, okay? Well guys, lucky for me, I was able to burn through the layers like I said we needed to avoid doing uh, because it would get that funky look to it. So that means I'm going to actually have to sand down a little bit and then respray some paint and then re-clear coat and do that all again. Hey, it was looking pretty good. I was actually down to my final, uh, my final little sanding. Uh, I got a lot, you know, the back looks pretty good. The neck looks good. Um, but this, can you see it? Can you see like how there's like these layers? And with those layers, there's like just slightly different color and you can kind of see the lines that kind of move and that doesn't wipe off. That's, I mean, I can wipe it and it's going to come and that won't polish out. And you can see along this edge where I got a little too deep with that. And this came right towards the end of where I was polishing. So what this means is I'm going to use 800 grit sandpaper. I'm going to... I'm going to mat that down again. My sides, my back are all fine. I can run tape along these edges uh, after I sand it. As long as I don't scratch any of the sides, I can run tape right along the edges. I'll tape this back up again um, and basically cover the whole thing. And I'm just going to spray the face of it. Get a nice thick layer on there. Um, I'll take it down a little bit from where this edge is because when I have to sand down just a little bit, I don't want to sand through on those edges. It just means more hours of work and it sets me back, actually it sets me back about four days or five days because I will have to spray it and then I need to let it sit for 72 hours, three days. So it's a day of spraying, three days of letting it sit, 
and then a day of sanding and polishing again. But that's what happens when you do the layers like I did and I chanced it. I know that there's a time that I would have just given up and said, forget it. But I don't, not anymore. <laughs> now I just redo. All right, I have resprayed it, recoated it. It sat for three days again, dry, so we got a nice good surface here. Uh, the good thing about the fact that I burned through, like I told you I need to be careful about doing, is that you were able to see that. Now I'm at the place where I need to just sand it again. I'm gonna start with 1500 grit sandpaper this time, and I'll see if I can get it leveled with that first. I can't always go up to 1000 or even to 800 uh, with the really rougher grit, but I wanna try it with 1500 first because I don't wanna burn through again. Now, why did I burn through in the first place? Well, I had gotten to the place where it was polished, and black is notorious for showing swirl marks. And I sit under these really bright lights here, and I'm looking down on the front. Uh, the back seemed okay and everything else looked pretty much all right, but the front just had lots of swirl marks. And I'm thinking maybe my buffing rag had just a little bit of a, I don't know, a little fleck of something or whatever, and caused a little bit more swirl to be seen. And even though it was polished and really technically could have been done, I looked at it and I was like, mm, I'm just not satisfied with that. So I taped it up and I have, uh, I sanded it back with the 800 grit and then I've resprayed just the front, which I just came over the lip of this corner so that would get sprayed again as well. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to start to sand the top with the 1500 grit. I'm not gonna take the tape off until I can see that it is going to be flattened and okay and that I don't burn through the top. Once that happens, then I'll take off the rest because if I do burn through again by chance, well then I'm gonna to have to re-sand it with 800 grit, spray it some more with clear coat and go from there. But I think we are on track now. Uh, so gotta just be really careful about that. If you look close now, you can see the line right here that kind of comes around and that's where the tape was. We got to get rid of that line and I'm going to do that with 2500 grit sandpaper. Now I'm just going to start to lightly sand this with a, a wet sand. So 2500 grit, wet sand, very light, not putting a lot of pressure and I'm going to check it often. So I'm not going to just continue to sand and sand and sand. I'm going to sand just a little bit at a time, wipe it dry, check it and I'll just come around and blend this ridge right on in so that it's well, invisible. I'm happy, to say, I'm happy to get to know you rather than just I'm happy to meet you. So again, rất vui được làm quen với bạn. Just can't get impatient. If you start finding yourself wanting to rush and do it quicker, then maybe it's better to take a break, walk away, go get a cookie or a brownie or something take a break and then come back to it. Uh, you've got to do this when you're patient and not feeling rushed. If you start to feel yourself getting anxious or like, I just got to get this done quick, then actually walk away. I know it's going to slow you down, but it's going to slow you down less than if you end up burning through. Um, so you don't want to do that. What I've done here is I've done just this quarter of it to polish it up so that you can see what it looks like. This is not done. If you look down here, you can see the line here, but here I've got it sanded off. So basically I just wanted to let you see what we were doing to get it to the place where uh, it'll be completely polished. And this is before I put on the um, Migliori ceramic coat as well, which will even make it shinier and brighter. So basically guys, this is where I'm up to. I just need to do the rest of it and pray for me that I don't burn through at any place here. So I've got a lot of work to do. I'm sure you don't want to be watching me sand all day. I mostly got it put back together guys. Um, got it polished up. Uh, you know, the one thing is, is that if you've got any tricks to making absolute certain you don't get any swirl marks from your cloth on black finish, you leave me a comment on that because, man, it's just so hard to not have any swirl marks. 
Uh, I do have to, I've got to set it up yet. The, the action on this thing is really low. I love that about this one. It is a nice playing guitar. Uh, this is an actual original uh, Schaller 455 chrome version of the 457. Bridge the one is from back in the 80s. This is a used one. So I mean it looks really nice, but it is used. So it you know it's got slight scuffings and stuff of a used bridge. Um, but those are the extremely hard to find originals. So anyway, pretty close here. I'll get it finished off uh, really quick. Keep fighting for joy, guys. We will see you next time.